I'd like to report a missing person, Sergeant Hughes. Certainly, Miss Barry. And who is it that's missing? My boyfriend. At least I think he's my boyfriend. He hasn't been very attentive lately. Now, that's terrible altogether, Miss Barry. When did you last see this reprobate? Last night. Half ten. He walked past my house and blew me a kiss. Blew you a kiss, did he? (laughs) Cheek. If you were my girl, you'd get the real thing. Like this. (laughs) And this. And maybe even... I love you, Joseph Hughes. I love you too, Mary Barry. Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. Here ye are. Get down, for God's sake. Do you want to be seen? O'Reilly, did you brief these lads at all? Larkin has all his boys in place. Haven't had the chance yet. And when do you suppose you might get the chance? When one of them gets their head blown off, is it? Mick Flynn said the men need to be briefed now. It's only a quarter to yet. Your point being? The officers in the station don't move out until the hour strikes, so I thought I'd brief the boys now before it all kicks off. Bloody excuses. Farrell, take over. Yes, sir. Our target tonight is the RIC officers stationed in that building across the way. They will commence their nightly round in 15 minutes. Head Sergeant Dwyer usually leads the column with five officers falling in behind. They move in single file. They will not be expecting trouble, so it should be easy to get a shot off. I've positioned men all along the roads leading in and out of Minute. Any signs of the Oxys or the Tans, and we will have prior warning. Once the first shot goes off, all hell will break loose. Keep firing your weapons until you are given the order to retreat. Once you have been given the order to retreat, hand your weapons over to Lizzie or Ellen here. They will dispose of them. Any questions? Where do we go when we retreat? You go home to Mossbury. You say nothing and you wait and see what happens. Do not, anyone, under any circumstances, bring your weapon with you. Make no mistake. When this ends, the Tans will be crawling all over this town. They will come in and knock your doors down and destroy your houses and if you are caught with a weapon, then you will be arrested, maybe shot. And we have too many of our boys out of action in Ballykinlar to want to lose any more. Rumour has it that this new camp in the Curragh will be filled in weeks and that the Tans will go around arresting everyone now. Thank you for those inspiring words, Tomas Barry. I just meant that... Keep your nose clean, your weapons out of sight and you need not fear the Tans. Oh, sorry to disturb you, Sergeant Dwyer. I'll, uh, give the boys a shout now, will I? What? Right, uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Hughes. Stiff! Curran! Perry! Moving out in ten minutes! It's a cold one out there now. You'd want to be well wrapped up, so you would. Perry's mother sent him another parcel. A red scarf in it this time you could hang a man with. But then you could use it as his shroud. It's that big. I was thinking of raiding a few houses on patrol tonight. What do you think? Curran suggested the house of God, but I thought, Jesus. (laughs) Sarge? Sarge? Sorry. What? Is everything all right there? Everything's grand. Have you called the boys for patrol? I have. Grant. It'll all be grand, Serge. What? With, well, your wife. She'll come back. I don't think that's any of your business, Hughes. No. Sorry. No. It's me. Sorry. It wasn't my business. No, but still, you're only trying. To help, yes. I appreciate it. She had a shock. Yes. She'll come back. Does the whole station know she left? No. I don't think so. No matter. They'll find out soon enough. 
I'm sure she'll come back. She won't. Why would she? Because this is her home. Not anymore, it's not. This place is as lawless as the rest of the country, and I hate it. I didn't take good enough care of her, Hughes. You did your best. I kept telling her things would be all right. What a fool I was. They will be all right. Those boys, they were just thugs looking for a bit of trouble, so they were. I keep asking myself if the job is worth it. You know it is. That's what I used to think. But I've lost friends and neighbours, and now my wife because of it. We've all lost people. I can't even visit home anymore. And you're happy with that? It was never that fond of me brother anyways. <laughs> but yes, I think in the end it'll be worth it. I like the job. What is it, Kern? Sarge, Stiff says his legs is fierce sore, so can he be excused patrol duty this evening? Tell him he'll have a fierce sore arse if he doesn't get a move on. Five minutes. He won't like that. That young fellow Stiff is getting worse. He'll barely work the counter now. And he's drinking on the job. Oh, sorry, sir. I I didn't mean to... Sorry. Miss O'Neill, any final instructions? The weapons have to be handed to me quick. Also, if any of you boys are injured, come with me too. Miss O'Neill knows a safe house where a doctor can be found. Do not attempt to make it home or go on the run with an injury. What if it's only a minor injury, like a nick or something? Are you planning on having a wet shave while you're waiting for this ambush? No. Because you don't generally tend to get minor nicks from bullets. I know you don't get nicks from bullets. I'm not stupid. Of course you're not. I don't mind him, Tomas. He's just a grumpy arse. Miss O'Neill, I'll thank you to know who's in charge here. I'll thank you to know who's hiding your guns for you. A favour we'll never hear the end of, I'm sure. A favour we appreciate. O'Reilly, I don't want to have to speak to you again. Go and see who we have and sort the men into position. Stay where you are, Sergeant Dwyer. Have a rest this evening. The four of us can handle the patrol. Are you sure? Yes. Stiff? Sarge? Give the chief a dram of that drink you have hidden up your sleeve, will you? I don't have drink hidden up my sleeve, Sarge. Are you inviting me to do a body search? <laughs> if I have drink, it's purely by accident. Hang on till I see. Oh, it's just a small bit. That's all the chief needs. Pour away. A bit more, there's the man. Oh, that's pure gorgeous, so it is. I needed that. You wouldn't want to be getting too fond of it now, chief. When my mother left my father... He became a fierce man for the bottle. Right, lads. <coughs> Single formation. Did she tell you she'd left me? Ah, now, Chief, as if... Then when I say she's gone to visit her mother, she has. Understood? Understood. Right you are. I do not want my wife and me to be talked about by anyone. Now get out on patrol. Is this your first ambush? Is it that obvious? Yes. You must think I'm an awful idiot. No such thing. I've trench roads and wrecked railway lines and that, but I'm not a complete beginner. That's how all of them started off too. O'Reilly was afraid of his own shadow his first ambush. Was he? Cross my heart. It was at Kill. That's only a few months back. Isn't that what I'm telling you? A few months back. Now look at him. Full of swagger. My brother was at Kill. Sean. Isn't he on the run now? Aye. He was good. And Milani liked him. Cool under fire. That's what he said about Sean. Big boots to fill. I think they might be a few sizes too big. Oh, you'll be grand, so you will. The rules for ambush, point, press and pray. <laughs> You're a brave woman. Divil a bit. I love the excitement. Stop, would you? What would I be doing at home only polishing shoes for me brothers? And Mary does that for us. Shame on you. Haven't you two arms? I do, but... Then you should polish your own shoes. I hope a new Ireland has a law that gives women the freedom not to polish the boots of boys. When I become leader, I'll make that law. When I become leader, I'll make it myself. <laughs> what? You're a gas ticket, so you are. A woman leader. Miss O'Neill, Barry, what are you two gossering about? Come over here. Hasn't he the sweet tongue on him all the same? Don't let him boss you about. I won't, so. Thanks, Lizzie. Tomas Barry, you take up position here. Hang on. That can't be right. Milani, over here, please. What is it? You have the young Barry boy in front here. Aye. It's his first action. 
I know that. Should he not be hanging back, observing, getting a bit of a shot off fine, but up front... Are you doubting my plan? I'm just asking if it's right to put an inexperienced... So, you are doubting it? It sounds like doubt to me. Who asked you? Look, Milani, Tomas is eager. I'll give him that, but... And he's the best shot in the company or so I've heard. Is that right, Barry? I suppose I... This is no time for modesty. You either are or you aren't. Then I am so. Up the front with him. Take the first shot, Tomas. Make it a good one. Right, lads. Into formation. Current behind me. Stiff, stay with Perry at the back. Oh, Sarge, do I have to? It's just... I'm not comfortable with that red scarf. What's not to be comfortable about? It's not your scarf. It's too bright. In the war, you'd be shot easy wearing a thing like that. I take my chance. Well, it's like a target on your neck. He has a point. Take it off. But it's warm, Sarge. It's too bright. No point in inviting trouble. My mother spent two months knitting this for me. She wasted her time then. <laughs> <laughs> you little English feck. Boys, come on. Perry, take off the scarf. See you when we get back, Sergeant Dwyer. Here they come. This is our chance. Ready, boys? Go on, Tomas Barry, would you? Shoot! Jesus, are you waiting on an invitation? I'm waiting until I get a clear shot. The lad in the front, he's in charge. That's who you need to... But that's not... Dwyer... Shoot! Jesus, shoot! He's been hit! Yes! One of them is down. It's an ambush! That's it, boys. We have them on the run. Yes! Keep firing until you can't see them anymore. Take cover! Keep low, keep low! Who's been hit? Right, boys. Let's get the hell out of here. Hand over your guns. Go home. Shot bad, sir. Good work. Christ. We need an ambulance. We couldn't see a thing. Just the shine on the rifles. Oh, chief. Somebody get an ambulance. Christ, he's bleeding bad. I killed him. Stone dead. Now, if you're caught with that rifle, you'll be stone dead yourself. Come on. Bring him into the nearest house. I don't care what they say. Raid it if you have to. It's a shock the first time, but it gets easier crossing that barrier. I seen it happen. Was it Dwyer I shot? I don't know who it was. Come on, you've got to go now. Ellen Kenny will help you. Do you know Ellen Kenny? Aye. She'll get you home. She's waiting down the road there. Go, now, for heaven's sake. There's blood all over him. Yes, you've done well, Tomas Barry. Now get out of here. Go! Whoever you are, we're coming for you. Get out of your homes. We'll find every last one of you. Every last one of you. We are coming! Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 to 2023 initiative.